Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Apple Shop housed decades of history in Whitesburg. Unfortunately, much of that was damaged in last month's flood. WYT's Chandler Wilcox has an update on staff that are working day and night to preserve what they can. Apple Shop is more than just a building with Appalachian history. It is a part of what the region is. I mean, I grew up at Apple Shop. I really credit Apple Shop for a lot of my success and, and my career in my life. And so knowing that it was underwater um, was maybe a little bit more emotional than even my house at times. Flood water rushed into the building, soaking archives of Appalachian history dating back 50 years. A terrifying situation for Apple Shop staff. The idea of losing all of that it would be devastating. Um, and also, as an archivist, my it's my responsibility to take care of these things. So it's, in that sense, um, it's, you know, very deeply important to me. The archive tolls up to 24,000 documents of Appalachian history. It's a large task to get it spread out and to see what can be recovered through whatever means that are available. They have a freezer truck in their parking lot full of documents and are sending films and tapes off to other archivists volunteering to help. With that said, some of their items already had to be thrown away. It, and, and it felt wrong the whole time. We were like, this just doesn't feel like we should be doing this, but everything was waterlogged, mud, mud soaked. And even though they have a lot to sort through, Apple Shop staff are going through the process carefully. So I've just tried to take it, it's a cliche, but one day at a time. I've tried to take it one day at a time. I tried to deal with what's right in front of me. If I worried about 24,000 items at once, I wouldn't be able to do it, but I tried to just one day at a time. Caroline says they should have a good idea of what can be saved sometime next year. In Whitesburg, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Apple Shop staff also say they still need volunteers to help clean up the damage. At least 18 Eastern Kentucky school districts were impacted in some way by the historic flooding last month. Letcher County Superintendent Denise Yant says 40 of her school employees lost everything in the flood and around 75% of her staff saw some type of damage. The Letcher County School District still does not have a scheduled start date. Our hearts are broken, but our spirits are resilient. We're going to get through this, and we're going to take care of our kids, and they're going to be better. We're all going to be better. Um, we just have to remind ourselves this is temporary. Now they are hoping to start back sometime in mid-September. Knott County Superintendent Brent Hoover says it will also be a school year of flexibility there. He says air quality and sewage are two challenges his school system is currently facing. A lot of people in Eastern Kentucky will need help tearing out, then rebuilding their homes. People are pouring in right now from other states to provide that help. WYMT's Phil Pendleton met with a crew rebuilding the inside of a home in Clay County today. This home off Kentucky 1482 is a buzz of activity Friday, some three weeks after water flooded it and dozens of others in the Oneida community of Clay County. We can do what we do without the donations and stuff that we get from all the other churches. Peters and volunteers from Mississippi and Tennessee are restoring a woman's home. Everything inside had to be carried out, all the drywall and insulation removed. Now it's being rebuilt. We try to follow the Lord and what we do, and he puts everything together, and we just try to uh, be a servant. And of course, you can see how shallow the creek is now, but the morning of the flood, it rose, came all the way up through here, and filled the house with about two feet of water, destroying everything inside. In fact, everything they could save from the house now safely underneath that carport. Some people are seeing their lives and homes come back together, but not everyone. We have folks right now that are still just waiting. And uh, sometimes we're uh, stretched very thin. Relief organizations need more volunteers to come and help out. That's the same all over eastern Kentucky. Sometimes access is not an option. But we still yet have folks that are unable to get out with their vehicles and stuff, tiles washed out and different things. But volunteers are making sure the jobs get done, with many simply using time off or vacations to help others. 
In Clay County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Volunteer agencies say they could not do what they do without so many different people agreeing to work together. Well, many of us are completely dry as we head through this Friday evening. Unfortunately, we've got some areas that have seen some rain and quite a bit of it so far this afternoon. Outside right now, it's Mountain Parkway at Slade. The sunshine is out. You see they're doing a little road work there in the opposite lane of the Mountain Parkway there, but all is quiet there. Temperatures around the region, middle and upper 80s. How about Manchester getting to 87? 86 Somerset and Irvin, so we are continuing to see warm temperatures. How about Wise just going down to 70? They're dealing with showers. Most of us are dry, but we head into southwest Virginia. We have two flash flood warnings in effect, one for Buchanan County until 630. Another one that takes in Buchanan and Dickinson counties until 815. So very heavy rain with this thunderstorm. In fact, we'll show you the rainfall rates. They're moving. They're very heavy rainfall producers as we head through this evening, and you see those developing there. It's a very heavy rain in southern Pike County as well, south of the Hellier community right along the state line. So we'll continue to watch these they move off to the east and the northeast through the evening hours. So, so far so good, though, for our Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week, where we'll be in the mid-70s at kickoff, halftime 71 and 70 as we finish things up on our football Friday night. Of course, our Game of the Week, Shelby Valley and Letcher Central, coming up here in the next couple of hours. I'll have the latest on when we could, on if those showers and storms continue into the weekend, coming up in just a bit. Steve? Evan, thank you. Police in Washington, D.C. have detained three people today after shots were fired in the downtown area near the White House and National Mall. Authorities say a juvenile and two adults were detained by officers. The shots were reported around 1.15 a.m. near the White House. Officers say they recovered a firearm in the area and discovered three unoccupied vehicles had been struck by gunfire. Police say the juvenile was in possession of a firearm. No injuries were reported. Americans could soon learn more about what led the FBI to search former President Donald Trump's Florida estate. A federal judge in Florida has signaled that he could unseal portions of the affidavit that could contain the details of what prompted the search. CBS's Natalie Brand has more from the White House. Less than two weeks after the FBI searched former President Trump's Florida home, the public could be closer to learning more about the investigation. Federal Magistrate Judge Bruce Reinhart has asked the Justice Department to propose redaction, signaling he could unseal parts of the document. I think we can look forward to discovering a few more tantalizing, tantalizing details and context. For the most part, we're not going to see the core of what we're all very interested in. Scott Fredrickson, a former federal prosecutor, says it's rare for an affidavit to be unsealed, especially since the DOJ has said the investigation is in its early stages. The DOJ is saying there's a lot more to come. It's a strong message from the Department of Justice that they are um, going forward full speed and they expect to gather a lot more evidence. But attorneys representing more than a dozen of the country's largest media organizations, including CBS News, petitioned the court to unseal the document in the public interest. The DOJ argued its affidavit details its probe of the former president's handling of highly classified material and would serve as a roadmap of the government's ongoing investigation. It explains the scope and breadth of that application, or that investigation, excuse me, and it has the, um, a number of confidential informants and witnesses whose uh, on, ongoing participation may be jeopardized by the disclosure. Other procedural records that have been released offered new clues into possible crimes under investigation. They include willful retention of national defense information, concealment or removal of government records, and obstruction of federal investigation. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Federal investigators are also looking into allegations that Trump mishandled classified information after improperly bringing documents, some labeled top secret, from the White House to the Florida estate. The former president has also claimed that he declassified the documents at issue before he left office, and he denies any wrongdoing. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, NASA's plans to send a man back to the moon is underway. The project will start with an unmanned rocket later this month. Plus, storm chances continue their increase as we head through this weekend. The breakdown is on the way next.